Joseph reunited with his family. Before this story, we learned how Joseph tested his brothers to see if their hearts had truly changed. He tricked them into thinking Benjamin had stolen a silver cup. When Joseph threatened to take Benjamin away, the brothers wept and offered themselves up instead. This showed Joseph that their hearts had truly been softened over the years, and Joseph was ready to reveal his true identity to his brothers. Now, we will learn about how Joseph is reunited with his whole family, inspired by the book of Genesis. Joseph watched as his brothers bowed before him, begging that he spare the life of their youngest brother. The hard hearts they once had were softened by time and grief. He saw in his brothers a love and humility he had never seen in them before. Joseph's throat tensed, and he held back tears and turned towards his servants and guards in the room. Everyone, leave me, he shouted. So everybody left, all but his brothers. Joseph stood in front of his brothers, then began to weep greatly. His cries could be heard from the palace gates and echoed through the halls of Pharaoh's household. Joseph, tears streaming from his face, said, I am Joseph. He walked closer to his brothers, watching their amazed faces. Is my father still alive? He asked, still weeping. His brothers could not answer him. They were dismayed and completely caught off guard. Please, come closer to me, he asked again. So they came near, watching him with pensive stares. Joseph could tell they needed more explanation. For the last time they saw him, he was being shipped off into slavery. Now he stood before them a governor of the most powerful nation on earth. I am your brother, Joseph, whom you sold into slavery. Please, do not hate yourselves for what you have done to me. God sent me here to preserve the lives of thousands of people, Joseph said. He explained to them how God had used him to save the lives of the land and all those who dwell outside of it. So it was not you who sent me here, but God, Joseph said. Joseph found himself ranting, yet could not help himself. There was so much he wanted to share, and so much lost time he had with them. Finally, he gave them an invitation, one that would change the course of human history. God has made me lord over all of Egypt. Come down to me and dwell in this land with me. Bring your families, flocks, and herds, and I will provide for you. Joseph offered this so that his family might be saved from the coming years of famine. Joseph then fell on Benjamin's neck and kissed him. He kissed all his brothers and embraced them. Slowly, all eleven of them began to speak to him, still dismayed over what had just transpired. Word came to Pharaoh, and he was pleased with the news and offered his family the best land Egypt had to offer. Joseph then sent them on their way with wagons to fetch their father and families. The brothers arrived back to their father and told him all that had transpired. Israel, who had lived in a daze of grief and mourning ever since Joseph's departure, found himself revived. I must see him before I die, Israel exclaimed. They departed as soon as they could, and Israel, with all his family, servants, and livestock, ventured towards Egypt. As Israel was traveling, he heard a familiar voice, Jacob. Jacob! God spoke gently. Here I am, he replied, adoring the sweet comfort of hearing the Lord's voice. I am the God of your father. Do not be afraid to go down to Egypt, he said. For Israel was old, and the journey was tumultuous for someone his age. For there is where I will make you a great nation. I will go down with you. So Israel and his people made a sacrifice to God, and traveled to the land Goshen on the outskirts of Egypt. Israel sent Judah out to fetch Joseph, and Joseph immediately took his chariot to pursue them. Joseph rode harder than he ever had before. Tears fell off his face and blew into the wind as he rode towards the countryside. A small dot could be spotted in the distance, and Joseph saw the face of his father as he drew closer and closer. 
He came to them, dismounted, and ran towards his father and fell on his neck. The two embraced for a long while before speaking, weeping tears that had been held in for years. At last, Israel could die a happy man. After reuniting with his father, Joseph spoke to Pharaoh about setting his family up on Goshen. He instructed them that they mention how skilled of herders they are, instead of shepherds, for Egyptians loathed shepherds. Joseph's family settled in the land of Goshen and thrived under the care of Pharaoh. The rest of Egypt, however, suffered from the famine, but Joseph's governance and wisdom guided them into flourishing. The Egyptians and Hebrews loved Joseph, and all considered him to be their greatest treasure. The time had finally come for Jacob to depart from this world and be with his Lord. His eyes dimmed as his father's once did. Jacob touched his hip, still sore from years ago when he wrestled with God. He had lived a long and prosperous life, and had seen his sons grow to be fathers and lords of their own households. He asked to be buried in his homeland, Canaan, beside Leah. Jacob blessed Joseph's sons as well as Pharaoh. The Egyptian sun set, turning the surrounding dunes a bright orange. Jacob, the son of Isaac, the son of Abraham, father of nations, breathed his last at a ripe old age. His sons mourned and journeyed back to Canaan once more to bury their father. Joseph, for as long as he lived, protected his brothers and their families. The Hebrew people thrived and prospered, and the years of famine came to a cease. They multiplied and lived under the blessing and provision of God. Yet their journey was far from over, and their hardship had not even begun.